we read from the Ten Commandments already the first thing this morning, and I want to continue in that vein because the Sixth Commandment is, is repeated quite a bit in the Bible. In Deuteronomy 5.16, Moses reiterates the Ten Commandments, and he says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And in the New Testament, it, it picks up. and the, the Ten Commandments didn't die in the Old Testament that Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Mother's Day. Now, every year I have to do this because I, I have to make sure that I'm talking to the right people, okay? So, because it's Mother's Day and it's, you know, who, what, so how many of you have a mother? Okay, about three-fourths of you. The rest of you, okay, I don't know what planet you're from, but it's, you know, we'll try to work in some things that will be relevant to you, but for those of you who have a mom, that's what this message is for. Um, this summer, 2018, uh, is, marks the 10th anniversary of the birth of, anybody know what? Any nerds here? The smartphone app. It's 10 years old. How about that? The, the, nobody knows how many apps there are in the world. Nobody knows that. Like the Google store has 700,000. How many have them on your phone? All of them. 700, that, and that's just one, one place where you can get them. But the, I, I read somewhere which shows you what, where my life is at, but I read somewhere that there are 300 apps created every day. You believe that? 300 apps a day are, are created for smartphones. And there are 12 million people that that's how they make their living. They make their living developing smartphone apps. So there's a goal for you. <laughs> but there are apps that do everything. I mean, they do everything but tie your shoes. There are all kinds of apps out there, millions and millions of apps. And uh, I got to think, what if, what if your mom was a smartphone? Right? John, look at your mom. John, what if she was a smartphone? That's scary. <laughs> she's smart. Yeah, she's smart. That's right. Uh, what if she was? Boy, she, she, think of all the hundreds of apps that a mom has. She's an alarm clock, she's a spell checker, she's a calendar, she's an interpreter, she's a scribe, she's an intercessor, an evangelist, a faith healer, a prophet, a teacher, an interior designer, a finance officer, a chef, a ghostbuster, a paramedic, a psychologist, a tutor, a tailor, a mind reader, a defense attorney, a judge, and a jury. All in one... She's a clean underwear monitor. <laughs> She's an animal trainer. I, I said in the first service, I m messed up my words, spell checker, and I said smell checker, but then I've watched moms do that, you know, when they pull the baby's diaper out, and I just go, well, you are too close to your kid, you know, you just, there's um, animal trainer, homing device for anything from missing keys to missing kids, um, a sage, a cop, a storyteller. She's your best friend, and she's your worst nightmare. Amen? <laughs> your mom, that's who she is. Yeah. Yes, and she, has, she can do those things, and she can do hundreds of more, and she can, and she did tie your shoes, didn't she? When you were growing up, and maybe some of you she still does, I don't know. But moms are awesome, and God says, you want to do well in your life? You want to live a long and good life? Then here's the deal. Honor your mother. Honor your mother. Uh, and, and the question comes, how, how do you do that? How, how do you honor her? Um, in a culture that's so used to pushing a button and, and, and having things done for us, you know, there's no app, at least not yet, that can honor your parents for you. You've still got to do that yourself. You've, we've, we've still got to be people who honor our father and our mother. And, you know, even if they've passed away, you still honor your mom. You still honor your dad, don't you? Just as a part of, part of who we are as family. That, you know, some, just because somebody passes away doesn't mean that the honor stops and the love stops. It goes on. In fact, Sandy was saying something earlier. How did you say that, honey? That you, you still 
look at life through those filters, the filters that you grew up with. And they come from your mom and from your dad. So many of them do. And so honoring your mom and your dad. But the, the question is, how do you do it? Um, I heard about three brothers who every year they have kind of a competition of who can love mom best, who can give her the best gift on Mother's Day, who can, who can bless her the most. And it's kind of a competition between these three guys for all their, all their adult lives. And they're all successful men. And uh, uh, in a conference call, uh, to each other, they were talking about what they did for mom this Mother's Day. And the first one uh, says, <laughs> I, you know what I did? I bought mom a new house. I got her a new house, and it's all, she, all the conveniences, everything's nice, and everything, so she can live in comfort, and she can live in style. I just blessed mom. I just went out, and I bought her a beautiful new house. And the second brother says, well, that's, that's really nice, but I bought her a Mercedes. I bought her something so that she, when she gets in that car, it's comfortable, it's got all the bells and whistles, it's, and mom can just ride in comfort and style, and she's just really nice, and so you can't, you know, new house, new car. And the third guy, the third brother says, I've got both of you beat this year. You guys know how much mom enjoys the Bible, right? And they said, yeah, yeah, we know that. And you know that she can't see very well, right? And they said, yeah, yeah, we know that too. Well, I read about this parrot that can recite the whole Bible. The, this parrot has been trained and knows every verse in the whole Bible. And it took 20 monks in a monastery 12 years to train this parrot to speak the whole Bible. And I bought that parrot for mom this year. So now all mom has to do is, is sit down with the parrot and tell them the Bible and the verse, uh, the verse and the chapter, and, and the parrot will start talking and speaking the Bible to her. Isn't that great? I said, wow, that's, that's quite a gift. And he said, you know what? I had to, in order to buy that parrot, I had to commit to give the monastery $100,000 a year for 10 years. Wow. So this is quite a parrot. This just doesn't happen. And so the other brothers are just shaking their heads, and they're thinking, wow, that's, that's really something. So the big day comes, Mother's Day comes, and Mother's Day goes, and Mom is writing thank you notes to her sons you know, for the gifts. And here's what she wrote. She wrote the first son, Michael, the house you built is beautiful, but it's way too large. I live in only one room, and now I have this huge house to clean. Thank you, but it's just, it's just too much. And then she wrote her second son, Marvin. And not the Marv from here. It's a different Marvin. I'm nearly blind, you know, and I can't drive. I stay home all the time. Thank you. But I really have no use for a Mercedes. Thank you. And then the third son, she wrote, Dearest Melvin, you gave me the best Mother's Day gift of all this year. That chicken was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, given, you know, if that's our standard, if that's our bar, okay, maybe there's some other ways that we could honor our mom, and I want to talk to you about that. Maybe there are a couple other ways that we could do it that might, might be more helpful. Uh, if you find a parrot and get a good deal on it, maybe, but, but here's some other things you could do to honor your mom. First of all, when you're loving your mom, love her verbally. Love her verbally. And what I mean by that is you need to say the words. You know, we, we just kind of make gestures. We give cards. We, we, you know, buy presents. We do, do things and have feelings and have intentions and all that. But you need to do it. You need to sit down with your mom and you need to look at her and you need to say, Mom, I love you. I love you. Those words are huge. How many moms? Raise your hand. Is that, are those words from your kids, is that important to you? Oh, it's huge, isn't it? Just, Mom, I love you. Just those words. The Bible talks about that in Proverbs 18. says that our words carry the power of life and death. And so that if we can bless our mom with life, with, with words that give her life instead of pull the life out of her, Mom, I love you. That's a huge one. And Paul says in Ephesians 4, 29, that that words minister grace 
to those who hear them. And so when you say the words, Mom, I, I love you, there is grace and there is life that you are giving your mom. And so love her verbally. Say the words. For some of you, that's tough to do. You don't, you don't do that. You don't talk that way. But you need to talk that way with your mom. And say, Mom, I love you. Hallelujah. The second one is love her with the grace of touch. Love mom with the grace of touch. I was reading about an elderly center that the the people were just so downcast and so forlorn, and so they decided to bring in a bunch of uh, puppies and kittens into the elderly center. And I've been, as I've visited in different places, I've seen places where there's dogs running around and cats running around. And, and it's so fun to watch those kittens or puppies or whatever licking the, the grandmas and grandpas' faces. And, and what are they doing? They're, it's, it's all about touch. Having somebody love them with the grace of touch. And it's sad that it has to be animals. And so we, as children, we need to do that. We need to be there. It turns out that each one of us, everyone in this room has 18 square feet of skin. Did you know that? You have 18, turn to the person next to you, you have 18 square feet of skin. Did you tell them? See, you learned something today. And see, God designed, there's, there's millions, in fact, there's about 5 million, I think, 5 million nerve endings in that skin, and it's all about touch, giving and receiving touch. And God designed us that way, and, and there's a reason for that, and it's because touch connects us to the world that we live in. And it connects us to the people that we love, and it makes us feel alive. And without that connectedness and that unique relationship that comes through touch, there'd be no mothering, there'd be no fathering, there would be uh, n- no connection between moms and babies. Mom is the one who held you. Mom is the one who comforted you when you were little. And uh, sometimes mom slapped you in the back of the head when you needed it. Any guys ever have that happen? Well, that's touch. That's touch. That's your mom helping you. And that's why the back of my head is kind of flat and the hair is kind of wore out because she, where my mom left off, my wife picked up. And, <laughs> but it's, it's communicating on a level that's beyond words. And we need to do that in our lives, and we need to do that especially with the people that we love. And so never become so sophisticated, never become so macho, never become so uptight that you can't reach out and give your mom a big hug and a kiss and say, I love you, mom. That's huge. That's huge. And it doesn't matter what your age is, whether you're a kid or whether you're you're all grown up. We need to do that. And then thirdly, we need to love her gratefully. Love her gratefully. Think of all the times that she sat up with you when you were sick. Um, all she's done to care for you. And, and she probably wasn't perfect at it. No, nobody is. None of us are. Not perfect at it. Oh, sometimes we miss the cues and that kind of thing. But she tried the best that she could to take care of your needs and she loved you. And for that and for her, we need to be grateful. Paul says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so we bless our moms when we're thankful to them and when we're thankful for them. And, and it, it's a way to love our moms. There's, and that spirit of gratefulness, if you have a spirit of gratefulness towards your parents, there's a peace that comes with that. That, that helps you. There's a peace that comes into your life and into your heart that helps you as you go along and in your relationship. So bring honor to her uh, with gratefulness. And then love her with humility. Some of you might be thinking, you know, you don't know what my mom was like, Pastor. I mean, my mom was abusive. My mom, and I'm not talking about my mom, but I'm just saying that maybe there's people out here who have that feeling that my mom neglected us. 70% of all the counseling cases uh, are are connected somehow to uh, anger or resentment or or unforgiveness or pain that comes 
that, we, that people hold towards their moms and towards their dads. Um, a root of bitterness and dysfunction sets in and unforgiveness. And Mother's Day, for some of you, might just be another Sunday and you just really don't want to hear about it. I know people that won't go to church on Mother's Day for that reason. And, and that's a sad thing um, because they know that pastor's pastor is going to talk about something like this. But one of the reasons why honoring your father and mother is one of the Ten Commandments, uh, why it's reinforced again and again in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, why it's there is because, listen, you cannot love yourself you cannot love God. You cannot love your spouse or your children if you have unforgiveness in your heart. It's like a dam. It's like a wall. And it, and it messes up all of our other relationships. Unforgiveness messes up our relationships with other people. And we can't really love with that. And so humble yourself. And even if your mom hurt you, even if you grew up in a tough situation, you need to let that go. And you need to honor your mother and honor your father so that it will go well with you. Amen? Is that, is, are you smelling what I'm cooking? That's so important that we see that and that we do that. Love your mom humbly. And then, number five, how do you love a mother? Love her by making wise choices for your life. Proverbs 29, 11 says, My son... Be wise and make my heart glad. And, and what it's talking about, be a source of joy for your mom. Be a source of joy and, and not heartache. Let her rejoice in you and what God is doing in your life and in your family and in your home. Uh, one, I never forget one time, be, be a bright spot in her life. One time uh, I called my mom, we were living overseas, and I called my mom from, from over there, and I had to, in order to catch her in the morning of Mother's Day, I had to call her at 1 o'clock in the morning, our time. And so I called her, and we got to talking, and, and she was talking about, you know, us boys when we were little, and, and she just started reminiscing. And my mom, she'll just kind of go off, and I'll just, yeah, mom. <laughs> and then, we're, you know, I mean, we're 7,000 miles apart, and she's talking all about, and it was great. But uh, she was talking about... Uh, us three boys and our growing up and reflecting on, I think she got to reflecting on all that the Lord had done in my life personally and the oldest son. And I was her biggest handful, was her biggest problem. Um, a trailer court brat on welfare and now a missionary in the former Soviet Union. And my mom was blessed. And it wasn't about me, it was about the fact that Look what God has done. Look what God's done in our family. Look, look how the Lord has taken us, where he's taken us. And uh, I'm so grateful to the Lord that all three of us boys were and still are a joy in her life, a bright spot in her life. And that brings honor to her. That brings honor to her, and that's a good thing. Proverbs 10.1 says, A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is heaviness to his mother. And so, honor your mother. Honor your mother by making wise and godly choices in your life. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to try to live up for all the trappings of success that, that culture and society tells us is how we need to be. But a life lived with character, a life lived with integrity and grace, Choices made out of wisdom and out of the leading of the Lord. A life lived for and with God is going to bring joy to your parents. It's going to bring joy to your home. So how do you love a mother? In a culture where it's so easy to just find an app and have things done for us. My daughter just showed me the other day, a, 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 there's a robot now that will mow your lawn for you and pull weeds for you and do all this stuff. And we just it's all taken care of. We need to take it on ourselves personally to honor our father and our mother. Don't let anything stop us from doing that. Use the words. Amen? Use the words and walk the walk. Live the life. And that will clearly communicate honor and love to the one human being on earth who held you 
next to her heart before you were born. And that's what we're called to do, to be that for our moms. With all of her strengths, with all of her shortcomings, we choose to honor our moms because God commands it, because she deserves it, because it ensures blessing in our relationships and a fruitful life, because in a world that's so much about me and my stuff and what I need, in a world that's so much focused on me, honoring our mother is a mark of a true disciple of Jesus. It's what Jesus looks like and it's you, what you and me look like. And so we want to do that this morning. We want to honor moms. If you're a mom today, would you stand? We want to honor you and bless you if you're a mom. I'd like for you to stand. I'd like for some, can we have some fellas come and, and, and help us? I need, just need a couple of volunteers. Come on, and, and we have some devotionals that we want to give to our moms this morning. And I hope we have, we had a ton of people in the first service, and so we might, if we run out, uh, we'll get some more. And so if, if you're a mom, would you just uh, come, come up to the front? And we're going we're gonna to give you a devotional, and we want to pray for you. Come on up, ladies. We'll get some more. Sorry about that. Thought we ordered enough. That's a good. That's a good problem to have. Praise God. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for these these women and for the way that they serve their families, the way that they give their time their attention, their love, the strength that they have, the grace that you've given them and how they pour that into their families, into their kids. And Lord, as they come into this family, the family of God, we want to honor them this morning and give you thanks for their lives and for who they are, the influence that they have on a generation. And so, Lord, I pray blessing on them. I pray that the grace of God would rest upon them and give them health and give them strength and give them uh, direction and wisdom. Bless them, O oh Lord, and provide for their needs. And let their children and their husbands rise up and call them blessed and love them. We pray, O oh Lord, that your grace would walk with them and those who are struggling here, who are not sure which way to turn, who are having a hard time just knowing what the next step is for their kids and for their family. Lord, would you, would you give them direction and would you give them peace? And would you lead their lives? We pray, oh God, for blessing upon our moms this morning. We thank you for them. And we love them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, ladies. Thank you.